Hello, I hope this video finds you well on night 17 of my nightly recording of a coding bat solution while schools are closed. Um, we're going to look at last two tonight, and that's contained in section one up two, and this video is the Python solution. Now, this problem um, uses something I refer to as students called reading frames, and it's how to search a string for another string. And it, it's a tricky thing to learn it. Once you get it, it's pretty good. But figuring it out can be tricky. So I have attached a, a link in the description to another video I have that kind of goes through it in more detail. But we'll try and go through it here. Let's start by reading the problem. Given a string, return the count of the number of times that a substring length 2 appears in the string and also as the last two chars of the string. So high, xxx, high, yields 1. We won't count the end substring, and that's really important in this problem. So here are our examples down here, and we can see in this first case it returns 1. In the second case, we see that we have xx, and it returns 1 case because it appears one other time. And in this case, xx, it returns 2 because we see it here, there's 1, and we see it here, there's 2. So my first approach, I'm going to take advantage of... Um, Python, and that Python doesn't crash when you try and access out-of-bounds um, indexes. But before I begin, I want to kind of talk about this idea of reading frames, like I was saying. So if we imagine this is our string pi xx high, we know that has a length of 6, and it has indexes 0 through 5. And if I want to compare, what I want to do is I want to count the number of times high appears. So what I'm going to do is, if I've written this is my comparing string underneath here. I want to compare is high equivalent to whatever is above it. So that's like saying is high equivalent to str at, and I'm just going to read those right off, uh, 0, 2. That's the substring. And then what has to happen is, you know, that will be true or false. So in this case, that's true. And then what has to happen is this has to move one index along. So now we say, okay, well, is high equivalent to ix. And that would be str at 1, colon, 3. And that's, of course, it's false. And then high is equivalent to, and we just keep going. We move this along again, and we say, okay, it's high equivalent to xx. Well, that's going to be str at 2, colon, 5. And that, of course, is false. And we say high is equivalent to, and we move it along in the reading frame. And now we have xh, which is str at 3 colon, oh, that should be 4, pardon me, 3 colon 5, and that, of course, is false. And now in this specific question, I can actually stop because the question specifically says to discount the last, the last two characters because we won't count that as a version, right? We can see that in this case, this example returns 1, because it takes the last two letters and says, oh, you're high, and then the only one it wants to compare to is that. And this is an idea of reading frames. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a loop to set it up such that this first value is going to be an i, and the second value is always going to be a relationship to i, and in this case it's always i plus 2. And so here's my first solution. So what we do is we start off by saying, okay, we're going to set a CTR to zero, and that's going to keep count of how many, how many um, strings we find that we need to count. And then I take the last two letters of the string. Now, it's really important here. Remember, this is this is taking advantage of Python. In Java, if you were to do this, this would actually cause an index out of bounds error if the string was less than two. And I'll show you in the second example how we would manage this. So now I'm going to set up my 4i in range loop. And what I can see here is that, if I just scroll around here, is that in this case here, what I want to do is I want to, I want to compare it all the way from 0. So I'm going to start at 0. Well, you can see here. And then I want to go 1, 2, and I want to reach 3. But I don't want to reach 4. And because I know with this that the comparison that happens is always is i less than, and it's less than whatever is here. So as long as i is less than the length of str minus 2, which in that concrete case would be, um, the concrete case would be, how should I show this, is i less than, 
we know the length is 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4. So as long as i is less than 4, I want you to run that loop. And then we include it by 1. And then what I do is I do an if statement in there. I say, hey, is i, i to i plus 2, i plus 2, is it equivalent to the comp string that I'm looking at? And if that's the case, I add 1 to ctr. And then once I'm done that loop, I return it. Oh, let me just pause that. With all this, I probably have a tab somewhere. Give me one second. I forgot the D. Got erased. And there it is. All right, now, again, this works in Python because Python's a little forgiving, but let's imagine that I wasn't in Python. And, and that, and we'll take this out because that was just that same example. Um, and I, I had to account for these cases down here because if this was Java, these two cases would actually crash because if you try and take a substring there, we notice that there's only one character here and zero characters there, so it would crash. So what we do is we include this if statement here. And we say if the length of str is less than 2, we just return 0. And this is really important. This is necessary if programming in Java, and quite frankly, many other languages. Python is really forgiving in this sense. And then after that, I simply run through the same process here. Now, what I've done here is I've I, you'll notice that it's a little different here. Well, why have I set this up a little different? Well, I set this up a little different because I was playing around with, instead of running to, remember if we scroll up here, I went to the, I went to this XH. I wanted to go right to the very end like that. Because sometimes, you know, when I, when I actually teach this, and if you, you look at the video that's attached in this description that goes to this idea of reading frames, um, you'll see often we take you know, the string we're comparing, and we go all the way through the string. And so what do I have to do here is, what happens in this case is I actually end up counting the last instance. So if I return it CTR and I hit go, you'll notice that these two cases are correct because they're accounted for in this if statement, but in every other case I have one too many. So I'm just going to say CTR minus one. And there we go. I could equally change this to minus two and hit go. What I, the reason why I felt it was important to include this is because I want you to actually think about setting this loop up. It's really helpful to draw out, like write out the example and kind of write down the concrete numbers here so you can figure out that pattern. Doing this initially as you're first learning really helps as the problems get more complicated. And being able to play around with this intentionally so that you get the right answer is really useful for long-term growth. Now, I want to do this one more way, and to be honest, this isn't going to work. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because it's just a super cool approach that is a really powerful idea, and I remember <laughs> one of the first times I came across it, I never really thought about it before, but I had spent a long time coming up with this really great solution for some students, and a student of mine put his hand up and he said, wouldn't it just be easier if you did this? And sure enough, it was. So I give him credit for this. And what you can do sometimes is Imagine if I took this string and I could replace everywhere that the word high with an empty string. So there's this really nice technique where if you replace a string, now let me actually just show you here. If I do something like comp str is equal to comp str dot replace, and I'm going to replace all the highs with an empty string. And let's just return comp str. Sorry. That should be comp str is equal to str.replace, pardon me, return comp str. And I hit go. Of course, this isn't right, but you see here how all the highs disappear. And that's because I've replaced all the highs with an empty string, which compresses the string. It's actually a really useful technique. And what I can do here is I can actually take advantage of that. And I can basically pull out the last two, pull out the last two letters. And then I can replace all of the last, I can replace every instance of the last two letters with an empty string. So then I can check the difference, the relative difference of the lengths, because if you think about this, if I start with, I'm going to hit 10 minutes here, but that's okay. If, if you think about I have high, xx high, 
and that's index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's a length of length equals 6. And then if I replace all of the highs with an empty string, I get xx, and that's 0, 1. And so that length is 2. And if I want to figure out how many I want to figure out how many highs were replaced, well, I can take the length of this original string, which is 6, minus the length of the new string, which is 2, and that's going to give me 4. That means that there's been 4 letters removed. So, if I take those 4 letters and then I divide that by 2, I get 2. So we get 4 letters gone, and if each letter is, each, each word is 2 letters long, we're going to get two words. And that's what I'm doing here. Now watch this. Always put your brackets around here, because otherwise you get an order of operations issue. Now you might say, well, why are you minusing 1? And the reason why I'm minusing 1 is, remember, the question states that you don't want to include that last, the last two letters. It doesn't get included in your count. So I hit go, and it works almost. And this is why I say this is a great technique, but it doesn't work here. But it does sometimes, um, specifically the cat-dog problem, which you'll see in, I believe it's strings 2. Notice, if I look at this case where it, where it works, right, xx, so I, I basically replace them all, and it replaces that once. But in this case, xx, notice I have three x's together, and that counts as 2. And therefore, when it compresses, it gets a little confused. Anyway, this has been a long video, but this is actually a... A really good problem and it's a tricky one and the big thing I think you want to kind of walk away with is this idea of taking a string and using a loop to, to count the number of times another string appears inside of it and like I said I've attached a video or a link to another video that goes through this have a wonderful evening and please don't hesitate to ask any questions cheers